Welcome to the Ordinary Guy Garage. I'm Scott, just an ordinary guy. And today we're gonna to talk about how to get your S10 to hook up at the track for cheap. So hang tight. All right, so getting traction on the, on the S10. Um, <clears throat> cheap traction on the S10. So when I first bought my S10, it had a small block in it, had the 7.5 rear end in it, 373 gear, but it was a peg leg. Uh, it just had the slapper bars for traction bars, 295 50s on the back. It was not set up for drag racing. Um, but I raced it for a season, just having fun. Uh, it ran 14 10s. That was about the best it would do. It got zero traction. It was really hard. My 60 foots were like 220s. I mean, it was it was ridiculous. Every time I left the line, it just spun its tires. In fact, mid-season, I changed over to a set of drag radials, and uh, even those, I couldn't hook. Um, so that winter, I, I tore the tr the truck down, built a new engine for it, <clears throat> and I uh, just another mild 350. And then I I looked into traction, figured out what I was going to do. Um, I did a lot of research on the internet, I looked at what the other racers were using, and <clears throat> the Caltrack bars seemed to be the most popular and the most effective. Well, when I put it together, I was on a real tight budget. Four to five hundred dollars, depending on where you buy them for a set of Caltracks, somewhere in that range, um, was not in, in my budget. So I decided to make a set, <clears throat> excuse me, I decided to make a set. Um, Everybody that I said that to said, "Oh no, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be able to make a set for as cheap as you can buy them." Well, I got about a hundred dollars in this and a little bit of time, and they work really, really well. So let me explain first how they work. So this is obviously upside down. Um, I'm, I'm like wrestling an octopus with this on a folding table and all this, but trying to do this on my workbench, you can't really see what I'm what I'm what I'm talking about. So um, we're trying a video here like this. We'll see what happens. Um, so the way that these work, now when your natural twist, so when you, when you accelerate, when you accelerate, you have your drive shaft coming down to your pinion. When you accelerate, your pinion is gonna go up like this. Your, your, and your leaf springs allow it. So when it goes up like that, you lose traction. You need to try to keep it fairly straight. What you want, in fact, a lot of the racers will start down a little bit and then when you accelerate, it brings it up to a straight line like this and then that's where you get your really good traction. So, what happens is in this section of the, <clears throat> excuse me, in this section of the leaf spring right here, when you accelerate hard, it, it uh, that section of the leaf spring will, will distort like that. It'll go like that. So the theory behind this, and bear in mind again, this is upside down. The theory behind this is when, the, when your axle wraps back here, it transfers that movement through this bar up to here and applies pressure to the spring, ideally right where it wants to wrap and prevents it from wrapping, therefore giving you good traction. And when you're not under hard acceleration, you still have some suspension. So. It, it works, it's a great system, it works really well. So, let me show you how I did this. Now, I looked all over the internet and I, you know, one of the things I found is you can't just go to one source on the internet and, go, and accept what they say is gospel because as you know, as you can tell with my videos, anybody's free to say anything. So, I, I always, you know, check multiple sources and weed through it and figure it out. So this is what I came up with. This is my version. I call it a Scott track. <laughs> but anyways, this is my version. So what I had learned by a little bit of research was the center of the eyelet to where you have, see so you have multiple springs right here. So this section where there's just a single spring right here, midway point, right about midway point is where, where, uh, is where you want the bolt here to apply pressure. So measuring this out, I'm at eight inches. So it's eight inches from the center here to the, the next spring. 
So from there, I measured it out to four inches, midway point is where I have this. So working that triangle there, and I believe I also did it four, yeah, I also did four inches from the center of where the bar would go to that point. So it's a perfect triangle right there. And uh, <clears throat> so that's, I figured that out right there. Then I went to the back, when I did the back here, now one of the things that the, one of the guys at the track had told me, the tech guys, when I, when I got back to when I first got this S10 and when it had the 295 50s on it, it had three inch lowering blocks and I mean it was totally ghetto done. And, uh, <clears throat> or well, it, was, it was not for drag racing, let me, let me say that, I, I didn't mean that. Anyways, it was not set up for drag racing. So the three inch blocks, not, not the way to go. But what was happening was this portion was down below the rim on my truck. It hung below the rim. And one of the tech guys said, look, you have to have all of your stuff above the rim. It can't be below the rim height. So <clears throat> bearing that in mind, um, bearing that in mind, when I, when I designed this, I figured out where it would still sit with the truck where it won't be below the rim line. So this is again my own measurement and I came up with two and a quarter. So this is two and a quarter inches above or hangs below that the spring pad right there or the bottom of the spring. And it, so it fits really nicely in there. Um, so that's how that worked out. Now these back pieces right here I pulled these off of when I got the 8.8 .8 rear end that I run in this. These were I bought or got these with the rear end. This is actually out of a Ford Explorer, and so I liked them because they were beefy. And uh, what I did was I made some patterns, figured out what, how I wanted it, cut it all out, welded it in. Came out really nice. Made just made cardboard patterns, traced it out and welded it in. Made it real nice. Over here I had to modify it. I cut. There used to be two pieces that came out here and the shock went in between. I cut one off and just used a single one because my shock is over here on this side and not on that side. So that's what I did with that. Um, the front is just 3 16 steel. I, I made, again, cardboard pattern, 3 16 steel. I cut, um, I cut four of them out, two for each side. And when I did it, I drilled one hole through it, through all four of them, bolted that one together, got everything kind of lined up, drilled the other two holes, bolted the rest of it together, and then I, then I used a grinder to make all four pieces the same size. Came out really nice, I'm really happy with it. Now, the piece right here, this is a swedge bar, and I believe I got it from Summit Racing. If I, I might have gotten it from Speedway Motors, one of the two, but they use a lot of these like in circle track and it's just a, a, a swedge bar. It has a, a right hand and a left hand thread. So I also got three quarter inch heim joints that I use here and you can see it, it it's got some free movement in there. Um, one thing that I made a mistake on is up here, I didn't gouge it out enough um, or notch it out enough to really get to this nut back here very easily. So it's kind of a pain to adjust these, but once you got them set, you're done. So it's, it doesn't really matter. Um, so three quarter inch hind joints, uh, swedge bar. Those are really the only pieces I had to buy, you know, besides the hardware. Uh, these bolts here were, uh, are grade eight. You know, I got the, there's a lot of pressure on here, but that's pretty much all I had to buy. The bolts and this right here, and I've got about a hundred bucks into it. Um, the other thing, oh, I also bought these two. The other thing I did was my, um, let's see if I can do this. I replaced the eyelets. I replaced the eyelets when I pulled it all apart. And these are energy suspension eyelets. So they're the, they're kind of the poly, the polyurethane. Um, now Caltrax come with aluminum bushings. I believe they're aluminum, but they come with a solid bushing, a metal bushing of some type, some sort that go on the, the front and back. And I just use these polyurethane ones and they seem to be working pretty good. Um, 
back when I did this, I didn't have, I didn't have the lathe yet. So I just, this was my easiest way to do it. And I think these were about 50 bucks. Yeah. So that's, I think that's 50 bucks is included in that hundred right here. So I bought these, the front ones, what you have to do up here, when you do the front, when you do the front up here, you have to trim down the sides of the, the bushing. So that way you're uh, the center, the center piece that goes through the bolt right there, or the, the bolt goes through to bolt into there, needs to sit inside of the metal part. That way you have your, you have your movement that you need. So I'm talking about the side right here. I had to cut those sides off and just leave the metal part sticking out and then that way it sits in there. But I had to do it with the razor blade. So it took a little bit of time and getting the old bushings out of here was not an easy thing to do. It took a little bit of time and a little bit of massaging to get it all work, but you want it to move freely and, and, and it did. So I may end up churning some uh, aluminum ones on the, on the lathe and putting them in there. I'm, I'm not sure. My rear end right now is, is down getting some work done to it. So I just thought I'd go over this, but yeah, but that's about it. Um, it was a cheap way to do it. hundred bucks, great traction with this thing. You know, I've been the last season I was pulling the left front wheel on the S10 up six to eight inches every single pass. You know, it was, it was just hooking good with this, with this system on it. Um, my problem is, you know, it was doing this. So now I got an anti-sway bar I'm going to put in the back and I'm doing a whole bunch of upgrades. So we'll go over that later. But anyways, um, this is how I did it. This is how I did it for cheap and you can do it too. So anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks to the new subscribers. I appreciate you guys and uh, all my old subscribers. Boom. I appreciate you guys watching and uh, stay safe. I'll see you next time.